how's it going for you? Uh, it's not going too well for the BBC, I'm afraid. Richard Sharp has just resigned. Uh, he is the chairman of the BBC, or rather was the chairman of the BBC. Uh, he says he should have mentioned potential perceived conflicts of interest. Uh, he says, I would like once again to apologise for that oversight, inadvertent though it was, and for the distraction these events have caused the BBC. This is basically the result uh, of an independent inquiry uh, that's been going on for quite some time into the fact that Richard Sharp uh, basically organised a loan for Boris Johnson uh, while he was Prime Minister uh, and didn't declare it to the BBC bonds that uh, are supposed to know about these things. Uh, and he says he, there was no evidence found to suggest that he played any part whatsoever in the facilitation arrangement or financing of a loan for the former Prime Minister. Uh, but he says, nevertheless, uh, he's going. He's going to be leaving the job uh, forthwith. We'll have a little clip for you uh, in a moment. We've got lots to talk about this morning, though. Richard Tice is here. Uh, we're going to put him up as the next chair of the BBC. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I think he could probably slash the expensive uh, organisation uh, at, a, at a stroke. I feel that this matter may well be a distraction from the corporation's good work were I to remain in post until the end of my term. I have therefore, this morning, resigned as a BBC chair to the Secretary of State and to the board. It was proposed to me that I stay on as chair until the end of June while the process to appoint my successor is undertaken and I will of course do that in the interests of the corporation's stability and continuity. So, Richard Sharp is no more. Richard, very good morning. Unbelievable. I mean, he's got it so, so wrong mm. all the way through. Yeah. Uh, there was a clear conflict of interest. He's been found out. Yeah. Finally, finally, at the very last knocking, he has resigned. And when he resigned, he couldn't even bother to put a tie on. No. I mean, what a shambles the man I mean, looked. It is absolutely Just ridiculous. ludicrous. I mean, he's basically said that he didn't think that he um, was very much involved. The report by Adam Hepinstall KC uh, said that he was very limited in his involvement uh, with this um, facilitation of a loan for Boris Johnson. Uh, but he says, I wish, I wish with the benefit of hindsight that this potential perceived conflict of interest was something I had considered to mention. This is when he was interviewed for the job. Now, if you were to go for this job um, and you would get to the interview stage, if there was anything that was in any way a conflict of interest, such as, oh, by the way, um, a couple of years ago, I arranged a, a loan for a friend of mine who happened to be the Prime Minister, you might, you might mention it. You might think so, but here's the point. This has been going on for month yeah. after month after month, and he has doggedly tried to stay the course mm. and waited until the very last second at the beginning of, of one of your shows, rather yeah. like Mr Rob. Indeed. Uh, uh, to resign when actually he's finally in the report been found out. I mean, it just shows it shows the or the lack of integrity mm. of the man that he hung on right to the bitter end. No decency, yeah. no principles, no standards. Not even the standards of wearing a tie. Yeah. Good riddance is what yeah. I say. Doesn't it also show the BBC to be a sort of toothless organisation? Because surely somebody at the BBC should have said to him, you know, you really ought to get out of here before this gets embarrassing. Because now it's embarrassing, it looks bad for the BBC, looks bad for him. Great. But he it's... claims during this resignation speech, uh, because people have, all, all, people who have defended him in the past have said, oh, well, he doesn't have much to do with editorial policy, he doesn't have much to do with the running of the organisation, it's a kind of titular title, blah 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 He's going on about how he's been, you know, raising money for the BBC World Service, how he's been, you know, involving himself in, in programming and dramas that have been commissioned. He's been commissioning all sorts of things. I thought that wasn't the job of the BBC chairman. It's not the job of the BBC chairman. What, but what is clear is that for many months now, it has been increasingly embarrassing for the BBC, try, having to essentially defend uh, his lack of integrity because he hung on for, for grim death yeah. by the fingernails. Right. So it has been embarrassing. I think it's actually been a bit humiliating for the BBC. And it's, it's, it's astonishing. Uh, it reflects incredibly badly on him. Yeah. Uh, it obviously reflects badly on Simon Case, the Cabinet Secretary, yes. who extraordinarily is also clinging on to his job. Uh, the fact that he didn't uh, raise this properly at the time, there was mm. a sort of a glancing reference. Um, and I think, to be honest, uh, people are not surprised that Boris Johnson was involved somewhere along the line. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, this is, uh, there is... There is now a vacancy... And uh, who knows? I mean, <laughs> will anyone want the job, Mike? Yeah. That's the question. Well, exactly right. Here's what he also says, right? Uh, Sharp says, when he introduced businessman Sam Blythe to Cabinet Secretary Simon Case in December 2020, uh, referring to the loan discussion concerning former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he did so in good faith and, in his words, with the best of intentions. I mean, nobody cares about whether he had the best of intentions or he did it in good there's, faith. There's, the fact is, he shouldn't have done it. Well, there's a, there's a thing called due process, mm. and he failed to follow it, and then he failed for many months 
to, to actually accept his failing mm. and, and that he was causing damage, he was giving damage to the government, damage to the BBC, damage to his own reputation. Yeah. Uh, just extraordinary, actually. I mean, the BBC really now seems to me to be completely hold below the waterline. You know, there's another report from the Public Accounts Committee out today in which it says that it's really not fit for the digital age and that it's being run like a sort of analogue business. They've got hordes and hordes of people in the, in the organisation. Nobody knows what they do. They've got, uh, look, they've got 64 we know, radio stations. We all know that it's, it's bloated. It's got a huge budget. Uh, it's very wasteful. Right. You only have to look at the Gary Lineker saga. Yeah. And, again, the, just the, the embarrassment of that whole saga. Mm. You know, who could do what on social media? Uh, and, of course, the, the greatest embarrassment of all, that actually Match of the Day viewing figures went up when yes. he was off the show. <laughs> so why do you need to pay him one and a half million quid right. for doing, a, you know, one show a week, for yeah. heaven's sake? I mean, the uh -huh. whole thing's just... It, it just stinks mm. of, of a waste of money. Yeah. And when you see... You always know it when you walk into the... Uh, the reception of a big company. Yeah. And if it's really sort of uh, luxurious mm. and very spacious and the highest quality, you know that that amount of waste just permeates through the whole yeah. organisation. Yeah. Well, and like all public sector bodies, they don't have to account for the money. Somebody, I was listening to Jeremy Carl's little special on the BBC, which went out last night, funnily enough, and, and it was said that the BBC was effectively set up to spend money. <laughs> it wasn't set up like anything else in the world, right? It's set up simply to spend yeah. money. It doesn't, it doesn't really make any money. It's not meant to. The good news is that all of this is heralding the demise of the licence fee because I think the mood of the public now is moving towards saying, yes, there are elements of the BBC that does some fantastic stuff, but you want to be able to pick and choose on a shopping list of, uh, of services in the same way you pick and choose from, from other uh, entities, where you, you pick and choose from the likes of Talk TV or, yeah. or possibly uh, from other broadcasters. Yeah. You pick and choose from Netflix or Amazon. Well, you should be able to pick and choose from the BBC. And then, actually, it's down to the individual. Then they're subject to commercial pressures. Mm. Then they'll stop wasting other people's money. Yeah, and the Gary Lineker saga, actually, you could say, probably forced this particular situation to happen because, you know, it was clear during that, as you say, that not only was uh, was the Director General powerless to stop Lineker from saying whatever he wanted and doing whatever he wanted uh, and, and literally calling out a sort of national BBC strike of sports presenters, yeah. um, but, but so was Richard Sharps equally powerless to do anything. Yeah, they were, they were all completely powerless because... Uh, they had allowed a situation where the man was 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 bigger and seemingly more important than mm. the organisation. But the proof came on the day when yeah. actually the people said no. No one is bigger than the organisation, mm. and more people watch Match of the Day without those overpaid yeah. presenters than with. And it was a great opportunity to say, do you know what? We're going to reset, fire the lot of them, yes. bring in some young new yes. blood for a fraction of the cost and will generate a new but dynamic course, match of the day show where actually you have a bit more football But on. of course it's being said now that not only was Tim Davey incapable of dealing with all of that because he's technically a marketing guy, doesn't know much about editorial judgement, and so and also was Richard Sharp sort of uh, in the firing line, so he couldn't really come out and make moral judgements about what people were making or what they were doing because yeah. he was himself under pressure. And it's sort of not the job of the chairman, I mean that, that really was the job of, mm. of Tim Davey as yeah. the director general and, and essentially you know, he sanctioned uh, and suspended uh, Lineker for the Saturday, uh, but then lost all power because the others uh, carried, essentially sort of went on strike alongside yeah. him, and that was that. Right. And you'll be pleased to know that just as they have an opportunity now to start again at the BBC, they've managed to blunder their way through um, <laughs> what can only be described as the most ridiculous statement I've only just read. The BBC board has described Richard Sharp as a, quote, person of integrity and a very effective chairman of no, the BBC. No, what? no, What? I mean, well, what would you call somebody who doesn't have any integrity? What, a guy that should have re revealed something that he didn't reveal, which he's now revealed, uh, and he should have resigned he's, months earlier. He's literally resigned for a lack of integrity. Yes. And for failing to <laughs> declare because of his lack of integrity. Yeah. And the, the, the board of British clowns called the BBC, <laughs> uh, have, have said that he's got integrity. Well, it gets so better. why is he resigned? It gets better. How about this? We accept and understand Richard's decision to stand down. We want to put on record our thanks to Richard, who has been a valued and respected colleague and a very effective chairman of the BBC. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, have they got any you, sort of sense of, of, of themselves truly, at all? You truly, truly could not make it up.
utterly, utterly I mean, surely what the BBC should do now, and I mean, I know we're, we're sort of slightly with our tongues in our cheeks saying that you should apply, but I think you actually should to see how far you can get through the process. Well, I think we should ask people, maybe I should apply on a cost-cutting, value-generating yeah. manifesto. Absolutely right. You a know, sort of time a, to save us all a few quid. A BBC manifesto you for know. the hard-pressed licence fee. Yeah, yeah the oh, nice no. manifesto for the British Clowns <laughs> Organisation, whatever it's called. Uh, but, but, but here's the thing. That'd be the night Sh job. Surely the point about the BBC now is that they need somebody to come in and literally strip it bare, you know, go open all the doors in all of the sort of secret corners of Broadcasting House, kick out all the people that are doing absolutely nothing, spending and wasting uh, taxpayers' money, get rid of half of the business, you know, sell off the radio stations, you know, get rid of the online business, produce, you know, David Attenborough shows and the news, yeah, and that's it. I've absolutely no doubt, frankly, uh, that if, if uh, anybody, any any serious manager, successful CEO of a business, yeah. if I went in there, I'm quite sure I'd take 20% off the cost pretty yeah. rapidly right. and no one would notice any difference in terms of the quality of the output that people saw yes. or heard. And, that and is unlike how. Richard Sharp, you wouldn't be removing £160,000 a year as a salary either because no. I'm sure you'd probably do it <laughs> like uh, Mr Bloomberg just, ran New York for a pound. Look, the, the point is you've just got to get the job done properly yeah. and quickly. Exactly. And it would be a an great privilege shambles. to do so. I mean, this is supposed to be the sort of jewel in the crown of the world's broadcasting organisations, and it's quite, quite frankly on its knees. It's a shambles. It can barely get from one point to another point without something embarrassing happening.